Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in the previous tutorial, we took a look at different things as to how we can actually go ahead and carry out different types of attacks. Uh, so in this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at the different types of or different levels of attacks and the levels of attacks can be at network level, operating system level, application level, data flood and protocol feature attacks. So Routers, IP switches, firewalls, these attempts to exhaust hardware resources using multiple duplicate packets or software bug are uh, called as different levels of attacks. The equipment vendor, vendor OSS, end user equipment. Uh, in this part, the attacker, he takes advantage of the way operating and implements, he implements their own protocols. Then we have finger bombing, it's an attack a service uh, or machine by using the application attack to exhaust resources. There are different type of attacks, again known as host computer or network. It's an attack in which massive quantities of data are sent to the target with the integration of uh, intention of using a bandwidth and processing resources. Then we have server, client, PC and DNS servers. Attacks in uh, which uh, bugs in a network protocol are utilized to take down different networks uh, resources and the methods of attack includes IP addresses, spoofing and corrupting DNS server caches as well. So, the tendency of DOS attack shows infallibility that uh, perpetrators take to aim and move up the OSI model uh, over time. The re relocation of the prime target is logical since more DDoS defense systems focus their primary detection powers on lower layers. Therefore, attacks on the web application layer are increasingly popular. Furthermore, layer 7 penetration that is a top level o uh, layer of the OSI model, it provides an outlet on a business logic layer which is considered as an abstraction uh, extension of the previously mentioned network protocol suit. So given that the internet is built vertically by multi multiple protocol layers, it would be perfectly understandable if internet DDoS attacks assume vertical classification as well. While network layers uh, DDoS attack attempts to overwhelm the victim server with bogus requests, the application layer DDoS attacks rely on legitimate ones. Such as, let's say for example, the Beitulahi and Deconic uh, in 2011. In layer 7 attacks, DDoS attacks, attacking computers uh, have to set up a full TCP connection. This while providing uh, genuine IP addresses is something you cannot dispense with. The entire action proceeding may seem legitimate in the absence of traffic spikes, but it may not also at the same time. They may uh, virtually swindle even a vigilant DDoS mechanism and they are stealthy, trust me. Uh, it is one of the most famous attack known as Manthena 2000 in 2011. So a layer 7 DDoS attack in contrast to the others may exploit vulnerabilities in application software thus circumventing detection and aiming directly at the targeted server as it was used in Manthena 2000 in 2011. In other words, they are more sophisticated since they do not count entirely on a brute force to achieve desired ends. Perhaps the most notable difference, so-called volumetric DDoS attacks strive to bring down network infrastructures and servers by employing high bandwidth consuming flooding. That benefits from an inherent blind spot of the internet medium. On the other hand, layer 7 DDoS attacks take the victim server in the rear, first encouraging well-known applications such as hypertext transfer protocol, voice over internet protocol, VOIP or DNS such as that is a domain name system. The goal of application layer DDoS attacks usually have nothing to do with overwhelming bandwidth. S some IT experts call them low and slow for a reason. Frequently at a close range are exhausted CPU or memory resources. Hence layer 7 DDoS leverage as well inherent flaws and limitations of applications. For example, system resources are always finite. They are not never infinite. There's surprise here actually that heavy resource consumption will eventually re render the server incapacitated. So, protection and mitigation of common volumetric attacks is something that IT specialists are familiar with and in contrast, layer 7 DDoS attacks often stand as a more formidable challenge. So, in, in short, to be more clearer, it's very hard for uh, people to go out and actually stop these kinds of DDoS attacks. They're not something that uh, a person can already know what is happening in the background. Uh, because, uh, and you may never know, for example, let's say, if a person is trying to go ahead and interfere with your firewall, then you may get an alarm at your IDS that someone is trying to enter your firewall if you have a good IDS, that's intrusion detection system. But 
uh, when uh, going ahead and doing a DDoS attack, you, can, you may never know if the, if the person is actually going and trying to uh, get into your computer or is actually just uh, normally visiting the website uh, within multiple IP addresses or through multiple IP addresses which you are getting a lot of traffic. You may also have noticed that let's say for example if you are going ahead and using your Google and if you're on a company on your own let's say for example you're working in a company and uh, you are trying to visit your google website sometimes you are requested to go ahead and enter some specific letters or uh, some ad addition or multiplication of a few uh, easy mathematics the reason of behind that is because the people want to know what exactly is the IP address and from where is the source coming whether it's just a DDoS attack because if it is a DDoS attack then uh, they won't DDoS attack cannot go ahead and um, ans uh, answer the uh, to the question of 6 plus 6 or 2 plus 2 or they cannot go ahead and write down uh, something in specific and at that point of time the computer will know that okay the, we are getting a DDoS attack and that's why we cannot sustain that and they will go ahead and straightly ban the user but there are also ways as to how you can go ahead and avoid that there are people who have written botnets that can that are so smart that they can go ahead and easily answer what exactly it is let's say for example you can take a look at uh, i'll go ahead and show you a famous app which is in the google glasses so here's the google goggles not glass actually so uh, you may be knowing about google glass that you just have to go ahead and use uh, your camera to go ahead and let's say for example if i go ahead and use my camera to take a picture of this page so it will uh, check that uh, the, the uh, things that are written over here are Google Goggles and uh, it will straight away go ahead and select, uh, uh, search about Google go Goggles on the uh, internet or if I go ahead and uh, let's say for example uh, okay great so we have a movie over here with the name of ABCD so if I go ahead and click a, a picture of uh, this specific uh, area only this area just okay only this area uh, specifically it will go ahead and uh, scan the image for letters and it will go ahead and search on the internet so people have developed such kind of application that can actually detect uh, letters from images that is the ones that we get as 4 plus 4 or 2 plus 2 that is called as a robot uh, scanning or something like that and the bots can actually go ahead and answer these things and uh, people cannot actually go ahead and, again the servers cannot go ahead and identify whether it's actually a DDoS attack or just a normal user trying to access and uh, he's answering the question and the uh, computer may again be at fault. So uh, that's the reason I was telling you that you cannot go ahead and actually protect your computers against uh, DDoS attacks but you can actually go ahead and try to prevent that and that is what we would be looking at the next tutorial. So that's it for this tutorial and just go ahead and DDoS someone else but just be under the legal limits guys.